the viewer is engaged with it in time, in, in temporal space. And so there's a dialogue between the filmmaker and the viewer with set parameters. And I don't know any other art form that has that in exactly the same way. Film has more specificity. I would say without question it was Koyana Scotsi, you know, uh, when I was a college kid dragged to a screening where I was told there was no plot and no dialogue and it was just music and I was like, well, what kind of movie could this possibly be, you know, and I entered the screening sleepy and uh, inattentive and left um, really challenged and um, seen capabilities that I guess I've carried through in the rest of my career. So um, uh, perhaps I lived a sheltered life before that, but that was a wake-up call for me. Yeah. In music, um, John Coltrane, um, um, Bill Frizzell, Thelonious Monk, um, uh, Bach, um, all types of pop music, um, too many and layered to to give credence over one or the other. But of course, the Beatles. You know, um, um, I would say that um, in film there was a bunch of different things that have uh, I found inspiration in, um, from the American avant-garde, from you know Robert Breer, from Jonas Mangus and Ken Jacobs. Um, and Stan Brackage, and um, following that into Phil Solomon, and uh, and also what's happening in narrative film. Um, almost everything Richard Linklater puts out, I find inspiring and challenging in some way. Uh, um, uh, Roman Polanski, um, you know. Um, I always get this question, and it's you know it's hard to say was there one thing or another thing, but, uh, you know, because oftentimes the films I like to watch aren't the, the type that I like to make, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I make a very different film than, um, than the film I go see, you know. No, it, there was, I mean, I always knew I was going to be an artist, you know, from a very young age, like from six or seven or something like that. It was just no question to me about that. Um, and but I always thought it would be painting or you know something you know making making pictures you know um, so that I've sort of morphed into a filmmaker and at that a filmmaker who appropriates is uh, was not something that I could have uh, uh, foreseen you know um, but certainly uh, art school opened up my my eyes to a lot of different things that are called uh, art and um, and how uh, image makers acquire and and conform images to their vision and so um, you know I think it was a step-by-step -step process you know um, you know I, I would say um, you know, there, there were films that had a, a sort of a eureka moment for me there was uh, Peter Delput's uh, lyrical nitrate you know there was uh, Chris Marker's La Jetée there was Alain René's To Le Mémoire du Monde. Um, you know, there was moments where I felt like I was spoken to and, and um, that I could, I could see taking that seed and going off and doing something else. And so, um, but, you know, I'm not a typical filmmaker, so I don't think, I never just like saw Gone with the Wind and said, yes, that's what I want to do. I want to get in front of a bunch of people with a bullhorn and, you know, move masses of people. No, my relationship with film has always been more like a painter's relationship, and that is that's me and the canvas, you know, and, and I'm very fortunate to collaborate with wonderful composers, and, and music has been as much an inspiration to me as film, you know. Well, one thing we started talking about was just um, the serendipity of, of finding a, a project. It's so hard, especially when you're young, to start, you know. And, um, of course, it's very trite to say, well, just start, you know. But um, you can, with, with archival work, some of that's already done for you. And so 
what I was suggesting to students here, since they are sitting on such an enormous archive, is that if they were just to set aside one afternoon a week or a month or whatever to go in and look at some films, that uh, maybe something would speak to them. Um, you know, after a few times, or they think they're looking for one thing and then they'd find another. So to set up some goal, something, you know, a MacGuffin, if you will, that you're you're going after nine times out of ten. Uh, while you're looking for that, you'll find something else. But I think it's the case with your shooting film, too. If you set out on one project, um, you need to leave yourself open to that chance or will present itself and uh, you'll end up doing something else. And um, the, the thing that's important is that you're out there in a position to receive that. You know? There's this idea of, that, of historicity and that also that, you know, images or, or convey uh, they're a passageway to a, to a past life and um, and that those people aren't that different than us and the same problems they force they faced are problems that still confront our uh, society so as far removed as that seems I think um, there's an immediacy to it and so if I had to pick a word it'd be immediacy I'm finding ways that express the human experience as best as best I can now. Um, the way, you know, I found it w was best working for me was in a temporal medium, in film, and uh, and then working with music. And um, that's not everyone's choice, but that that's mine. And uh, then there was this um, sort of longing and um, uh, the Portuguese word saudade, you know, of, of longing for something that you didn't have and, and that so much of our life experience is um, the passage of time and not being able to grasp it. And I wanted my artwork to somehow also have that emotional quality. And uh, I found that in in nitrate, deteriorated nitrate film and in, in, in archival film in general. Um, so I, I make uh, my, my films for people to whom that speaks to. Um, it's not to everyone. I mean, I don't, it's not to my friends necessarily, you know. Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily to my family, um, but there are people who connect with that. And so, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make films for myself that interest me and can sustain me because it's it's an effort, you know, and um, and uh, hopefully I can find a topic or, or a subject matter or a, or a composer or a piece of music or a piece of footage or something that's going to um, inspire me um, for the next project. But I'm really going from project to project, and it, it goes back to, like, what is your legacy? I don't, I don't know right now because I'm, I'm just going, I'm trying to make work, and, I'm, and work is what sustains me. And... Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm not making it for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, so I never expect to win an award. Um, but if somebody uh, thinks my work is cool, then I think um, it's because it's following its own path, you know, and, and so I don't worry about that stuff, you know. A lot of universities have a cinema program with diverse programming. You know, what you guys have is quite unique. I mean, you have... Um, a state-of-the-art projection. You know, you have uh, visionary uh, leadership at the top with the, with the president and and with you, John, and uh, and you also have a remarkable archive on campus. So, um, you know, you have a hub of cinema here in the Midwest, um, and to mistake this for just another um, unique programming um, opportunity, it's, it'd be short-sighted for a student to think that um, they're not sitting here on top of a a real digital renaissance.